Alright, welcome back. Today we're here to talk about 1997's Batman and Robin. Oh man, I'd like to do anything else, actually. <laughs> but we'll do it anyway, for you, the fans. <laughs> for you, our many fans. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. let's start with it. Bat nipples, okay? <laughs> Why are they here? <laughs> You're not wrong. Let's pull that in cinematics. Part, <laughs> right, <Yeah>. okay, fair. <laughs> Plot and storyline, Batman and Robin. All right, um, there's kind of a plot. It's it's very jumbled and not very clear or defined or, like, it doesn't go anywhere. And there's a lot of them. Yeah. It, it, that's the other thing. Like, it's kind of like Batman Forever, but worse. With, yeah. with how many plot lines they've got going on. Here's the thing with the plot of this movie. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you understand that the three bad guys, Poison Ivy, Bane, and Mr. Freeze, all want to kill Batman, but you don't know why. I mean, well, you, you kind of know why, but they... Well, Bane, you have no idea. He's just there to follow Poison Bane's, Ivy. And yeah. They ruined the character of Bane. But then, like, Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy have two goals that conflict each other to such a point that you're like, how did you get here? Right, yeah, because Mr. Freeze's goal is to freeze all of Gotham City, hold it for ransom so that they'll fund his project to fix cure his wife, who's right. dying. Poison Ivy's goal is to run Gotham over in Gotham City with mutant plants that will eventually... Kill all human beings. Call human beings, yeah, and, and take over the world, because it's all about plant life and things like that. But the goal is they team up because... Poison Ivy's like, if you freeze everything and kill everybody, then my plants can grow undisturbed. But plants don't grow in the snow. Plants don't grow in ice. And the idea is that the plants can already kill the people. So, like, the right. Only, it just didn't make any sense. Yeah. And, and, like, also the other thing that didn't make any sense was that... Well, okay, I mean, nothing really made sense. Nothing made sense. But, like, Mr. Freeze is like, oh, my suit is powered by diamonds. As if power, <laughs> as if diamonds create power. Right. And also inherently freeze things. Right. And he, like, needs to live in the cold, which is weird. And Poison Ivy gets poisoned, so now she's poisonous, which is weird. Yeah. And, it was like, and then Bane shrivels up when he loses the... act, Like... I don't understand anything no, of not this it. movie. Not one thing. Why did they put nipples on the bat suit? <laughs> why are they there? <laughs> they, well, I can tell you why they're there. He <laughs> thought he was going to... Joel Schumacher, that is, the All director. Right. He thought he was going to portray like the, the statue of David on the bat suit. Because you can see the nipples on David's statue. Yeah, but that's different because David is naked. Right, and that's the thing, is that he, he's going for, like, a naked bat suit sort of vision. It, it didn't work. I'm not defending it. It was terrible. I but like I think that's just why he did it. It's not a good idea. I just don't... Yeah, I don't I don't like it, okay? No, it's terrible. I don't, it's terrible. <laughs> there's also a lot about, like... Yeah, there's a thing where, like, Alfred is dying, and... But the same thing Freeze's wife is dying from, and then... Why is Mr. Freeze bulletproof? He... He's bulletproof? Yeah, very first scene, when they're in the museum. The cops shoot at him, and he's just totally fine. Oh, well, Why is that... Suit? I don't know. I guess, but, like, it's, like, glass, right? Like, I, I don't... I really don't know. I don't have answers. There are a lot of questions with no answers. And why they included Batgirl in this is a whole other thing, too. Like, it didn't make sense, and... Where did Mr. Freeze get a rocket ship to go to space? Why? <laughs> why did he get a rocket ship to go to space? Literally, there's nothing that makes sense in this movie. So, it, it's, it's terrible. I gave it... A point five, and I gave it a point five because they had a story. They had a lot of stories that there was like something to actually like understand what was happening, but it, it, none of it made sense. None of it is logical at all, and it it doesn't flow at all. So yeah, I well, gave it a point five. I gave it a zero, and I stand <laughs> by that. I don't understand any of this movie. I don't understand how this disease that that is so rare that only three people have ever had it that all three people ended up being major characters in Mr. Freeze's life, well, at least Batman's life. I don't understand. How did this happen? How did any of this happen? Yeah, I don't... I so don't anyway, know. zero. Point five. It's, it's not good. Once you have frozen mankind, these babies will overrun the globe. And we shall rule them. For we will be the only two people left in the world. Yes. Adam and Eva. The acting in this movie is bogus. <laughs> There's not one good role in this entire movie, with the exception of maybe Alfred. 
Alfred is always good, and that we we've never really talked about Alfred's character in the other ones, which is a shame because he's been good the whole time. I think he's, he's the one yeah. consistent, the one consistent. In the I liked him the best in Batman Returns. I think, yeah, he was good mostly in because one. of that one line. One has just sprung to mind. Yeah, that, that was the best line funny. in the whole series. But yeah, yeah, no, the acting in this movie is terrible. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is awful. Uma Thurman is. is terrible. George Clooney ha- can play exactly one character, and it's George Clooney. <laughs> so he doesn't play a good Batman. Okay. Also, George Clooney has apparently never held his head up like straight before. That, <laughs> his entire movie, he's going like this. That was my. He has a bobblehead, and it drove me insane. It's terrible. It drove me insane. He had a so the thing is so he had a little smirk on his face pretty much throughout the whole movie, and he bobbled head. So yeah, he had this very like, and it was just so you, so terrible, so terrible. Chris O'Donnell was the one guy that seemed like he was trying to make this a good movie, and the thing is, Robin's character is really whiny and unredemptive at any point because his whole point was he's like oh i can be good too i don't i don't i want i make batman's equal i'm not just a psychic i'm an equal but never at any point in that movie do they no. give you make you feel like he deserves to be batman's equal he gets frozen by mr freeze he tries to kiss poison ivy which is how people die he like never succeeds at anything without somebody else's help like yeah they gave batgirl more success success than him and batgirl literally had zero training yeah. Robin had apparently go- been going through, like, simulations. Yeah. And and been training with Batman. And then Batgirl, who is not Barbara G- Gordon for some reason, who has no training whatsoever, is just all of a sudden, like, some kick-butt girl. And look, I appreciate a strong female character, although she was still a sex symbol. But, like, she also was, like, a strong female character to an extent. Well, and by character, I mean, like... They made her do strong things and cool things. Like, she wasn't a strong character by any means. No, she was, like, barely in the movie until it was time for her to be Batgirl. Yeah. And that was, like, okay with me because she did a terrible job. Oh, yeah, she was really bad. Uh, Alicia just... Silverstone, I believe, is who it was. Yeah, yeah really, really, really tough really to bad. watch. Yeah, uh, yeah re- I, 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 there was nothing really redeeming about the acting in this movie. No, but here's what I will tell you. So... Arnold Schwarzenegger is always terrible. That's true. And so when I see him in a movie... I don't have any expectations. So he doesn't actually bother me, even though he gives like ice pun after ice pun after ice pun. 25, gets, I believe. It gets really annoying. Yeah. yeah. I could use more. Uh, oh, yeah. I wish the whole movie was ice puns. Let's okay, talk it pretty much it. is, to be it, honest. It would have been better if there was no line that wasn't an ice pun. Oh, that would have driven me insane. <laughs> anyway, um, he's bad, but he's always bad, so that I don't care. Uma Thurman's Poison Ivy was the worst part to me because she her speech pattern... I know she was trying to sound really seductive because her whole thing was she would like she would like try to woo you with her plant dust or whatever. But to me, even when she was talking to herself, which she did a lot, because you have to understand what her thoughts are, right? So she she had this speech pattern that reminded me of like a Shakespeare poet. And it just But like it, not a good one. No, no, it, it wasn't yeah. poetic. Like it an off brand say. She was she was poet. talking like she was in a Shakespeare play. She's not in a Shakespeare play. She's by herself a lot of times. It didn't sound seductive at all. It sounded to be or not to be, that well, is the question. question. I feel Whether a fancy. Whether it's better. Yeah. Right. It's like, I feel bad. a fancy for Mr. Freeze. You know, I, I was just yeah. like, why are you talking like that? Why did no one stop her in mid sentence to be like, why are you talking like that? Because it's not good. So she was the one that drove, actually drove me the most insane. But yeah, there was no one. No one was good in this movie. Um, I... How did I, she got eaten by a plant. She controlled plants. That's more. That's back to the story. I don't. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. Continue. No, there's, there's 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 nothing redemptive about this. Once again, I gave it a point five. Um, Alfred, I finally gave some mercy points to because I never actually considered him when I gave acting um, points, but he he's good. So I gave him point five. But everyone else is absolutely terrible. I gave it a zero because Alfred, believe it or not, did earn it point five. But it should have been a negative point five, dang it. <laughs> so I gave it a zero. <laughs> terrible, terrible acting. Absolutely the best. It's it's the worst. And the time has come for plants to take back the world so rightfully ours. Because it's not nice to fool with Mother Nature. So Action wise, I mean, okay, here's the thing. The action was decent, except that to me, it, it was so far fetched and out of this world that I couldn't give it any credit. For example, my favorite my favorite example of this, they're in a rocket ship, which Ben already mentioned they shouldn't have been, but they were in a rocket ship. They kick the doors open, and then Batman and Robin literally surf on the doors down the sky. 
Now, I, I'm no physics major. I don't know much about physics, but what I do know is you can't surf through the sky on a door of a rocket ship. Like, you would fall and you would die. It looks like everything, and then they would just, like, they would do these random, they grab, like, Mr. Freeze would grab a vine and swing from him and then fly up way further than he should have. Like, there was just, everything about the action was just so yeah. cartoony and so not realistic. And I can... I can uh, suspend my disbelief for superheroes because they're supposed to be kind of out of this world. But Batman is a more realistic superhero, and therefore I would expect his action sequences to be at least slightly more realistic than what I got in this movie. And it, it, it just drove me nuts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the, the, there was action in this movie. It did look terrible. It didn't make any sense. But, like, nothing made sense in this movie. We have to give it, you know, some credit for at least having action uh mm -hmm. this was actually the highest grade that i gave it and looking back at my notes i'm not sure why i gave it so high <laughs> um, but i gave it a 1.5 <laughs> which is higher than it deserves but i'm not going back on it now We're um, <laughs> i will say that uh it wasn't even like i enjoyed the action portions of batman Forever a lot better than I liked the action portions of this one. What did I give Batman Forever? Oh, okay, yeah. No, this is consistent, at least. It's significantly worse than Batman Forever. Um, but, I mean, at least it's still Batman, and he still punches people from time to time. And n not very often, though. I mean... he The goons, that's why. That's why I gave it a 1.5, because he was fighting the goons. He was fighting the goons and, a lot. And the hand-to-hand -hand combat with the goons was fun-ish. Funnish, and by that I mean one point five out of five, which is a very failing grade. Yeah, no, I definitely get. I gave it a point five out of five. Like it, it was, it was really bad. You know, it's bad when you have to feel like you, you feel like you have to justify a one point five. <laughs> when you feel like you have to justify anything higher than a one, you got a pretty bad. You movie. got a bad movie. Yeah, yeah so off to a real good. Story, it was, <laughs> this movie is really bad, and you know, for, I'm sure for people who are wa who are watching this video, you've seen if you've seen Batman and Robin, you're not surprised that we're giving this such low ratings. There's really very little to like about this movie, and the action is no exception. It's bad. No beauty. Just the beast. <clears throat> All right, bat nipples, let's talk about them. Cinematically, <laughs> I have a lot of questions and no answers. <laughs> why did they... I mean, you gave me why they gave Batman nipples. Okay, hold on. Costume design. The costumes looked good with the exception of, like, the nudity factor to it that was really weird. I didn't like how long Batman's ears were. That was bothering me. That was a little time. weird. Yeah. yeah, that was a little weird. I liked that the, the colors on Robin's suit were a little bit more subtle. Yeah. A little bit were, more modern feeling. A little darker. I liked that. Um, what was, okay, here's something that was really weird, okay? During the last fight, they changed into a different costume. Right, mm -hmm. which I know that they were like trying to sell more toys. Okay, I know the history of the movie. They wanted to sell more toys, so they kept changing them out of costumes into new costumes. They kept giving them new Batmobiles and new Bat Robin bikes and whatever. I get it, but then so they change into the costume to fight Mister Freeze. Right when they only have like a couple of minutes before everybody's dead, but that's fine. They have time for a costume change. But then they go back and everybody changes out of their costume, and Batman changes out of his costume, but into a new, different costume. And that was weird to me. I don't know why they did that. Um, the Gotham City had lots of really large statues that like nobody would ever build in any city. They didn't make any sense why they were there. They looked cool, I guess. Um, Gotham was still dark, which was kind of cool. Like Gotham City looked okay. It didn't look as good as like the original two, mm -hmm. but I mean, it still looked okay. And the Batmobile looked pretty cool, although I liked Batman Forever probably the best. I like that Batmobile the best. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, um, I have one note for cinematics, and it's cartoony, which Batman Forever was cartoony, but this was like cartoony times four to me. Yeah, it like, bad. it was just so ridiculous. The sound effects were very Scooby-Doo or Looney Tunes or however you want to call it. Um the way that they would fight was very cartoony. The way that they kind of acted was very cartoony. And actually, fun fact for you also, I'm full of fun facts today. Yeah, you're... Um, I, I read somewhere that Joel Schumacher would actually, every time um, they would start to record, or they would start to like act and film and all that, he would shout out to the actors, remember, we're making a cartoon. And that's how, and that is the that is the the tone he gave his actors to work with. 
And so the fact that everything was cartoony from the set, the sound effects, makes the a lot acting, more sense, yeah. it makes a lot of because he told them that's what they were going to do. Man, poor directing on his part. Oh, it was really, it was really bad. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it does make sense that the Sin Max and all this is so bad just because of the direction that the he decided to go. And I, I think he was told to go that way because Warner Brothers was trying to sell toys and they needed to make it child. I friendly. hope they didn't sell a single toy. I, I don't have no I idea. I probably bought as some. as a kid, as a child watching this movie because I did see this as a kid. Um, and here's the thing: like, I I didn't hate it as much as I do now as a kid when I watch yeah. it. What I will say though is, even as a kid, I didn't love it. It was okay. I liked Batman Forever a lot better as a kid than I liked this one. So it is definitely That's made true. for kids. But even as a kid, it, it's bad enough that kids will probably notice. Like, it's it's just not yeah. good. There's another point that I wanted to make. I'm always talking about the length of our camera shots. This one had the shortest camera shots. But there's a scene that when it played, I started laughing uncontrollably. And you noticed it when I was doing it. You were like, what are you laughing about? And what happened was Mr. Freeze, who's Arnold Schwarzenegger, was freezing some guards and the camera angle kept going to mr freeze oh, yeah. to the guards back to mr freeze but just a little closer and it did that like four times <laughs> until you were like right in his face <laughs> and if the rest of the movie had been that i would have enjoyed the movie i would have thought this is hysterical you know <laughs> by the end you're just like on the tip of his nose and he like his laughing was there and it was very <laughs> you know it was so, it was so good, good. <laughs> yeah no terrible terrible camera <laughs> terrible camera decisions i don't know why they did anything that they did but man. Oh, I also want to make this comment. <laughs> there was a scene where Batman actually like he 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 jumps out of a Batmobile and tackles Mr. Freeze and he stands over him with his cape and like triumphantly. Mr. Freeze literally looks like an action figure. Yeah. Very he doesn't much. he doesn't look like our Mr. Freeze at all. It just looks like a toy laying at the bottom of Batman's feet and Batman's doing this. And it's just very awkward looking. And even as a kid, I noticed, I remember it as I saw that. I was like, man, I never thought that looks good. And it, it does. It's terrible. Yeah, it's really Anyway, bad. we've probably dragged out cinematics too long. But let's just say I gave it a 1 out of 5. Why did I give it a 1 out of 5? Yeah, I don't know. Again, here we are. I also gave it a 1 out of 5, probably because I liked the way that uh, things looked to an extent. Like, I liked the Batmobile. I liked the Bat. Yeah, plane. I mean, yeah, I guess it looked okay. It looked fine. It looked okay. That's probably um, why I gave it a 1. Yeah, but I, yeah, definitely... Definitely doesn't deserve any <laughs> higher than that. And I'd like to say, I know this has been about four minutes of segment here. It could be 20 minutes longer of us talking about if how If we really this wanted is. to dig yeah. into this, yeah, we could we could drag this out. But we'll, we'll, we'll spare you. I'll spare you. We're, yeah. we're done talking about it. It's terrible. It got a one. Probably a little bit of too much credit, but I'll give it to it. One yeah. out of five. Two million. You don't have it. Three million. I'll borrow it from you. Four million. Five million. That's a utility belt, not a money belt. Six million. Seven million. Last but not least, we will talk about the entertainment value of this movie. And the one thing I can say, uh, entertainment-wise, is it can be fun to laugh at. Absolutely. Ben and I enjoyed ourselves to the extent that we were laughing at it, and we were enjoying laughing at it. Now, I will, I will give you, by the end of the movie, I was feeling tired of laughing at it, even. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. It was only fun for a while. It was fun for a while. It was too long. If they had made the short... Superman 4, for example, is probably in the same boat as Batman and Robin, quality-wise... Uh, but Superman 4 was 90 minutes, so we could laugh at that and enjoy it enough to where it was done, we were done. But Batman and Robin is two hours and some change. That's way too long. Yeah. They had, it, it, when you get a movie like this and, and they did nothing right and they drag it out for two hours, it's it's really bad. So it's entertaining if you're with somebody who's also willing to laugh at it and you can, like, I don't know, it's been a long time since you've watched it. Maybe I don't really know how else to tell you. It isn't worth watching, like even, yeah. even in that sense. But Yeah, it's, it's really bad. Um, it, okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal about this movie. Is that there are some scenes that I thought were ridiculously funny and I was laughing hysterically and uncontrollably to the point where I probably should have seen a doctor or a therapist. <laughs> Definitely need to see a therapist after this. Um, there's also some scenes that I was... There's a scene where Poison Ivy in front of everybody just prostitutes herself. Just right there in front of everybody. She's like, hey, listen, if you pay a lot of money, I'll get naked for you. That's like literally word for word. Well, that's what she implies. She says, oh, you can see everything you see. Plus and what you, you don't, don't see. see. Yeah. 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 For the winner, I'll bring everything you see here plus everything you don't. So, I mean, like. There was nothing up to the imagination. No, no. And so, uh, that was just cringy to watch. Oh, it definitely it was. It was really cringy to watch. And Batman <laughs> had a credit card. 
Why did Batman have a credit? Did he walk into a bank in full costume and they were like, yeah, sure, have a credit card? I. <sighs> yeah, no. Look, I gave it a 0.5 in entertainment because of that one scene where they zoomed in on Mr. Freeze's face so many times. <laughs> if that scene hadn't been there, it would have been a zero. I gave it a one because I enjoyed laughing at it. But, I mean, again, you can only laugh at it for so long before you get annoyed. So it's. It's terrible. All things considered, I I added all my score together, and most of it was 0.5, but there's a couple ones in there. Um, my final score for this movie is the all-time low, and I didn't think I'd ever score a movie this low, but it earned it. Um, the score is 0. 0.7 out of 5, my total score. Mine is 0. 0.6 out of 5, and I feel like that's generous. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so we average our scores, we get a 0. 0.65 out of 5. Which, so, again, is generous. But yeah. the good news is, the good news is, we can actually watch good movies again. Yeah, so we just finished all the 20th century theatrically released superhero movies. We're now into our century, which, movies, superhero movies got a lot better <laughs> um, yeah. come, come year 2000. Which means, well, our next video is going to be um, the year 2000's X-Men, which I've seen once. Um, I've seen a couple of times. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I I don't, like I'm not really familiar with it, but I'm excited to rewatch it. So. Yeah. Tune in next time for uh, 2000's X-Men. See you later.